The world is in a very stressful place right now. You can't open a newspaper in the morning without feeling crushed. So here's the human race on a suicidal rampage. That's what's happening right now. The war on terrorism, the biological desecration. So there are so many stress factors on the planet right now. You're noticing someone's wearing something that pisses you off. They're saying something that pisses you off. They're looking at you in a way that pisses you yeah. off. Yeah. And you just keep tying yourself to that physical plane. As long as you see what separates you from them, you're gonna be pissed off forever. If you go through life, you know, judging and condemning other people, having negative thoughts, all that you're really doing is sending a message right into your own unconscious mind that you're guilty. Can I get in, please? Thank Hello, can I get in? Anger is, a, is an emotion that covers up fear. And oftentimes, um, we have anger because we're afraid Damn to it. feel our fear. We develop compulsive behaviors. But if you're willing to just stop and acknowledge that you're afraid, then you can also acknowledge that somewhere within you, you're bigger than the fear. You're not going to discover the best version of yourself out there in that crazy, noisy, busy world where we wake up to clock radios and listen to the radio while we shower, watch television while we eat breakfast, listen to the radio in the car on the way to work, listen to the radio all day over the intercom network, make phone calls, get put on hold, listen to the radio. We've got Walkmans and Dismans, we've got TV demons, we've got cell phones, pages, internet, CDs, TVs, DVDs, iPods, we've got so much noise we can't even hear our own thoughts. And you're not going to find the best version of yourself out there in all that noise. It's a deep-seated habit of uh, being totally identified with thinking. It's the human condition, which could be described as lost in thought. It's like a wild horse that is taking you anywhere, everywhere. If you don't learn how to tame the horse, the horse will take you wherever the horse wants you. How many people said, if I only get X amount of dollars, if I could only get X amount of orgasms, if I could only have it happen, a position just like this one where my everything was touched, then it would be perfect. And then you get to that moment, and it isn't. Do cars bring people happiness? Of course. For how long? For how long? <laughs> mm, a couple of months. You want to be happy for a whole day? Go shopping. It feels great, but it doesn't last, and then the credit card bills come. But if you want to be happy for a lifetime, you've got to find a way to make a difference in other people's lives. You've got to find a way to make a contribution. Most people are so concerned with getting to success that they forget significance. And that's the great journey, is the journey to significance, not the journey to success. Happiness is a decision I must make. Happiness does not have to be um, something that happens at the end of some kind of goal. Happiness can be along the way. You've got to grow old gracefully, but you're very mortal. And these experiences only happen in one lifetime, and you've got to grab every single one that goes by. Happiness comes from your perspective. But it's not about what's happening out there. It's about how I show up within what's happening. We basically need to reorient, restructure, very pattern of our thinking. That is very hard, but our happiness lies right there. So if we want the world to change, we have to become new people. Unless and until we make a quantum leap inside ourselves, we can't be the conduits for the quantum leap that has to occur in the world. Because up to now, evolution has been unconscious. It was automatic. But now evolution is consciously chosen by a species, and that's a revolutionary thing. And you are part of that. Religion is now evolving where we're becoming aware that all of us have the capacity to be God conscious or to be love conscious and to remove ourselves from being a victim. I found freedom, my understanding of freedom. Out of all of my 58 years, I found it in the depths of the worst holes in San Quentin and Folsom Prison. It took the process of detaching from everything. You don't have any desires and you reach that balance then you feel happiness that you would probably never feel from drugs, from anything else. What is really happiness? So we have a job for our own self in search of happiness. <laughs>